Winston? Winston? Come back with that leg of lamb. Looking back at 1900s cuisine, while the British were amazing at puddings, the French were maestros at patisserie. Given some apples, the British would have given you a humble but yet delicious apple crumble, but the French would have given you a tart tatin. Even the name sounds luxurious, tart tatin. Had the Brits invented it, it would probably have been called an upside down, topsy-turvy, caramel and apple tart. We love those names, you know, the spotted dicks, the, uh, the, those ridiculous silly names, the toad in the hole that we, we just grew up with and, and uh, are just traditional dishes today. The dessert owes its name to the Tatan sisters, Caroline and Stephanie. In the heart of Salonia, France, the Tatan sisters opened up the Hotel de Pindor in 1894. It's about a hundred miles south of Paris. With the sisters' delicious food and hospitality, the hotel was renamed Hotel Tatin, and the Paris bourgeois all came south, uh, not only to hunt in the region, but, but also to try the sisters' amazing gastronomy. I'm going to share with you today the Tarte Tatin recipe we made and served at Buckingham Palace. It's slightly different to the Tarte Tatin that the Tatan sisters made the original recipe, but I promise you this one tastes delicious. I start off peeling my apples and I cut them first into quarters. Then I'm going to take out the core and peel them. The original recipe, the apples were actually cut into quarters and the core taken out and the skin was left on. But I think it tastes much, much better if we remove that. Also, the original recipe again, when it came to cooking, the apples were actually left in quarters and in some cases, actually in halves. When we were making this for the queen, we couldn't really put a whole, like half apple or something in front of the queen, could we? So slices were much more delicate, especially when people were dining with the queen. Made it a little more fancy. Once all the apples are done, then we have to start slicing them. Once all the apples are sliced, then we can sauté them off and we'll make the caramel sauce and the pastry. The original recipe you would start with a pan like this and it would go on the stove and you would add some sugar and some butter and it would cook until it just started to caramelize. Then you'd add the apples and let those simmer as well. But I'm making the palace recipe and so we would actually make a caramel sauce first that we poured onto the bottom. We start off in a pan and add some sugar and some water. Turn on the heat and swish that around until all that sugar's dissolved. We let that cook until it caramelizes. While the caramel's cooking, then we can start the apples. Now, I'm actually just going to slightly saute the apples so, it, so they start to soften. So I have some butter in the pan and then in there I'm going to add some sugar and some lemon juice. A little cream of tartar because cream of tartar retards the apples and that means it holds them back, it stops them from going brown. Then a little lemon zest. And finally, my apples. Give them a good stir. And we just want them to get nice and soft, but not too soft, we're not making a puree. Keep swishing around 
the syrup. Be careful, you don't want to splash yourself. It's really, really hot. Certainly don't stick your finger in there and taste it. And you need to swirl it around rather than putting a spoon in there because it'll start crystallizing. We don't want that. We want a nice, smooth, golden caramel sauce. We used to get gorgeous apples when I worked for the Queen in the kitchens at Buckingham Palace. And they come from Sandringham. They'd be grown on the estate. So at Sandringham, even at Balmoral Castle, the tart tatan and all the apple dishes were really amazing. My apples have softened now and I can start putting them onto a tray. I'm actually putting them onto a tray and then I'm going to tilt the tray so that any of the juices actually run off. We don't want to make it too wet. You can see the juices are starting to run off now and it's best to put them in the refrigerator. Let them cool off. It's easier to handle for when we start fanning them around the dish in a few minutes. The caramel's just starting to bubble away really, really fast now. It's been about eight minutes and it'll start coloring around the edges. So we keep swirling it. Don't be tempted to taste it. Don't walk away. And what you want ready is something like a nine inch tin and some water, about half a cup of water. You can use a sugar thermometer and get the temperature exact, but when you're making this a long time, just waft it and you can smell that that's caramel. Then we go into the mold. Just about a third of the caramel and then carefully swish it around so it completely covers the bottom. Then we're going to add some water to the caramel. Give it a swirl around and we'll let that cool down. While the caramel's cooling and setting up and the apples are cooling down, then we can make the pastry. The pastry, hmm. Now, a lot of places you'll find when you see a tart tartan on the menu, they actually use puff paste, frozen puff paste. But come on, this is a classic dish. And if you're going to make it, let's make it properly. I mean, puff pastry. You may as well use canned apples in there or something. In fact, you may as well just buy a frozen one ready made. No, fresh pastry. And the pastry that we used at the palace was incredible. It's delicious. When you cut through the apples and into that soft pastry, oh, it doesn't get much better than that. And we start off with some flour. Then butter. The butter needs to be at room temperature. After that, some lard. And I think it's the lard that really does give it this richness in the pastry. We're going to get our hands in there and just rub that lard and that butter into the flour. It's so top heavy on fat, on, on butter and lard, that it makes it so rich. It's not like just doing a regular pastry. It's like a patty brise, as the, the French would call it. Now don't rub it in too much because we've got to put some water in there too. As it cooks, the water steams out and makes it a delicious pastry. Just get all that fat mixed into the flour and then you can add the water. Bring this together. I know it's messy, but it will taste incredible. Once you've got everything mixed together, a little flour on the table and then tip out that pastry. A little more flour on the top and just lightly bring it all together. Now we couldn't roll this onto the tatan and the apples right away. We've got to refrigerate it. There's so much fat in there and we've been working at it, loosening it up. We've got to let it set up again. So a little parchment paper, take our paste and pop it in there and then fold this over into the fridge for about an hour. While the paste rests in, the apples are cool, we can start arranging them neatly in the dish. Now, it's easier if you buy the really big apples because when we start arranging, it doesn't take as long. But 
what we have to do is get all of the nice apples, the pretty ones, okay? Those, not like sort of these chunky little pieces. And we start arranging them in the dish. Now remember that we're actually going to invert this. So inverting it, we actually go this way on top so that when we invert it, it looks really, really pretty. And we take our time and we just go around and lay these all on top of each other and make a really nice circle. Pick out the pretty ones. Take your time putting them in there. Arrange them all neat. One wheel going that way, one wheel going this way, and a few in the center. Once we've got the base covered, which will then be the top, then we can take all the rest and we'll just carefully lay them over the top. This will be our middle layer. You won't see it because the pastry goes on next. Now make one nice layer and finally the pastry. The pastry is still firm from the refrigerator and I may not need all of this depending on the size of the tin. If you go to a 10 or 11 inch then you probably will. So I'm going to take about three fourths of the pastry and just soften it a little. Then a little flour for dusting and to stop it sticking. And I'm going to roll out to about half inch thick. I don't want it too thin. I don't want it like a, like an apple pie or a, you know, a chicken pot pie that you're covering. I want about half an inch thickness in there. Then we just lift this up and lay it over the top and push down slightly. Now to go around with a sharp knife. Onto a baking sheet little hole in the center oh. to let out any steam and then it goes into the oven 350 degrees Good. it's been in the oven now for about 40 minutes it's golden brown on the top and all the juices are coming up and over the top don't touch them they'll be really really hot we want to let it set for about five minutes or so, and then we can turn it out. The moment of truth. We've got to turn it out and hope that it comes out. I can't tell you how many times I've made this for the Queen, and it was ready to go upstairs for dessert to the royal table. Please work, please turn out, please turn out. <laughs> Put the tray on the top, reach under, Turn over quickly. Oh. oh, it's so pretty. A couple of apples that don't want to come out. Come on, you go in there. And you in there. Doesn't that look amazing? But it's not finished yet. At the palace, we'd actually serve this with some cream, some whipped cream with sugar, creme chantilly, but a little brandy folded in there as well. And then the brandy and the apples, unbelievable together. But remember, going back to making the caramel, we left some in the pan, put a little bit of water in there, didn't we? And then let that cool down. Well, we saved that because this goes into the royal dining room too, along with the cream. But first, we can spoon some over the tart tartan. Like most sort of famous dishes through history, they all have sort of stories associated with them and most of them were created by accident. The same with the tart tartan, but really, was it? You know, the story goes that um, the tartan sisters were actually making this dish and they had some apples uh, on the stove in that sugar and butter and they got a little bit too brown they got caramelized they were just going to make an apple pie and then they thought okay we'll put the pastry on the top and we'll do an upside down pie but when we dig deeper 
I'm not sure that that's really true. One of the most popular desserts on the menu at the Hotel Tatan was actually a dish called Tarte Salonia, and it looked just like this. It had the pastry on the bottom. It was an upside down caramel apple tart. It wasn't called Tarte Tatan, but Tarte Salonia, I think that's where this dish came from. It doesn't matter if all the apples go everywhere now. Look at this crust on the bottom. Unbelievable. It's soft and gooey, delicious and buttery. It wasn't until 1926 that this dish appeared on the menu at Maxim's in Paris. Tarte Salognac was renamed Tarte Tatin. And this classic French dish went straight into the history books. I get goosebumps eating this. It's such a gorgeous dessert. That pastry on the bottom and the caramel apples, the, the chantilly cream with a little brandy in there. The Tatan sisters. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you make this dish. It really is a fabulous one, a real showstopper. All your family and friends are gonna love it. Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. We're almost at 200,000 subs. Thank you all. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.